Yo, what is going on, Rizko Sock here, and today I'm bringing you guys my PCL Season 2 Week 6 Team Builder Slash Game Against Tone, and it is Miami Malin Marlins. If you guys do not want to see what I'm bringing, of course, the timestamp, as always, is on the right side of the screen. Go to that time, and you guys will be taken right to the battle. For the rest of you guys, let's get right on into this. So, uh, as you guys can see right here on the right side of the screen, his team consists of Clefable, Nihilego, Porygon Z, Crobat, Seismatone, Vicable, Aegislash, uh, Hydreigon with Z moves, uh, Reuniclus, Blossom, Mega Galate, and Vicable also has Z moves. Now, first and foremost, I'm sorry if I'm a little quiet, guys. I am not feeling like 100% right now. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling very congested, but that's neither here nor there. Hopefully, next week I'm better. Um, but yeah. This is the team of six I brought to kind of help counter him. So going off the bat, kind of naming his threats. Um, the Helico can be a problem. Uh, Clefable, if I let it up, but Cosmic Power can be a problem. Uh, Porygon Z, if its specs can be an issue. Uh, Age of Slash can be an issue. Z Hydreigon is always an issue. Trick Room Uniclus with Calm Mind. Uh, Mecha Glade, Blossom. He has a lot of threats on his team, as you guys can see. He has a, a fair amount of bulk but to the point where it's almost non-existent. He's really gonna have to rely on uh, Seismitoad, uh, Age of Slash, and like a bulky Reuniclus or a bulky uh, Clefable against my team. And as you guys see, my team kind of matches up pretty well against that. So I decided first and foremost, Scarf Dialga is a must bring this week. Uh, Flamethrower, Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and Hidden Power Grass. Uh, Hidden Power Grass, of course, is for that Seismitoad. Uh, Earth Power hits everything on that field, not named Crobat and not named Fickable. And of course, Hydreigon. Uh, Flash Cannon is very, very good stab. It neuters the Nihilego, uh, destroys the uh, Clefable as well. It also hits Crobat. It also hits Vicable. It also hits Hydreigon. Uh, Flamethrower is there just for the Blossom and the Age of Slash, really. Uh, Earth Power hits it as well. But Flamethrower is a nice neutral ground play in case he's in something like Crobat or something. And I don't want to over predict and click Earth Power as he, like, superpowers me or something. I don't even know if I get superpower, whatever. But yeah, that is Dialga. Um, just max speed, max special attack modest to do as much damage as I can. Uh, next up here we do have Twix, the Assault Vest Keldeo with Secret Swords called Hidden Power Grass and Aqua Jet. Um, this spadef is to take um, I think it's, yeah, I can take uh, two Thunderbolts from a Nihil, from a modest Nihil like that's not Specs. Uh, if it's specs, modest can do a KO me. However, Aqua Jet with my, uh, even with negative, can destroy it as well. And Scald into Aqua Jet kills the Nihiligo. So this is like my main Nihiligo check. Um, it also really helps check like a Spadef Age of Slash. I can Scald burn it. Um, uh, yeah, this is also, it also Scald burns the uh, Mega Galate if I can. But yeah. Uh, Kaltios here, kind of a spadef wall, because otherwise I kind of lose to Nihilego after kind of looking at the team a little bit. But yeah, next up, Scarf, uh, Arena Trap Dirk Trio with Earthquake, Rock Slide, Sucker, and Toxic Max Attack with near max speed, nah, just max speed, not jolly. Um, this outspeeds Nihilego and all of his team, not uh, like disregarding Scarfers, of course, and Crobat. Um, yeah. With the choice scarf, I do outspeed everything not named Scarf Crobat. Uh, Earthquake hits everything on his team that Rock Slide doesn't, and vice versa. Rock Slide hits everything that Earthquake doesn't. Uh, Sucker Punch is good priority, and Scarf Toxic is Scarf Toxic. I'm a very toxic player, as you all know, and I like my toxic damage. Next up here, we do have Choji, who is designated to be the Clefable check, because after looking at the team again, um, I think I had, yeah, I had Zapdos here as like a, a nice Fizz Def pivot to help stop Mega Glade, and then I realized, wait a second, I lose to Cosmic Power Clefable, because I brought that before. So I needed Haze, Taunt, Poison Jab, and Toxic. The speed on here is for Clefable, Poison Jab, Stab, Toxic is just a Toxic, Taunt is to make sure Clefable can't set up on me, and Haze is Haze. Um, and then I just tossed the rest in bulk. But yeah, that is Choji, um, designated Clefable check. Uh, if Clefable doesn't come, cool, I have a sack in the back. Next up here, we have Ray-Bans, the Flygon, U-Turn, Giga Drain, Crunch, and Earthquake. Uh, Giga Drain, as you can see, is for the Seismitoad, so I have a little bit of coverage for the Seismitoad. U-Turn is for Momentum. Crunch and U-Turn, uh, not U-Turn, Earthquake, <laughs> hit just about everything else on his team. 
so it's just just a generic like it's gonna be a good lead it's gonna be a good like 50 50 mon uh, if I need like if I have a free switch I can go into this and I can see what he wants to do so yeah it's gonna be a good starting mon and last but certainly not least here we have defensive torterra synthesis toxic earthquake and stone in uh, stealth rock uh, designated H slash answer uh, can also help against physical bat and Mega Glade not carrying Ice Punch. I don't think he would. Um, I personally think like Thunder Punch, Close Combat, Zen Headbutt, and something like Shadow Sneak would be good just to kind of uh, run through me, but I digress. So yeah, that is pretty much the team for this week, guys. With that, I will see you guys right in the game. Alrighty, guys, and we are back with our game versus Tone, and of course those Miami Mala Marlins. So as you guys can see here, I am going to lead with my Flygon, as he is going to lead with his Crobat. Um, when I see Team Preview, I see no Clefable. Uh, I see no Nihilego. So that means that uh, it's probably going to be like Aviary Unicliss, uh, like fully, I, I think, Fizz Def Seismitoad uh, for something like the Trio or the Flygon. Um, or Mega Heracross, which actually didn't come. Uh, I think, like, Defensive Crobat. I'm thinking, like, Mixed Aegislash and, like, Nasty Plot, uh, Porygon Z, and then Mega Gallade is Mega Gallade, so it can do just about whatever the hell it wants to do. <coughs> Sorry. It can do whatever it wants to do. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. So... I am going to leave with my flag on, so good luck, have fun, Tone. Let's make this a good battle. So I'm going to be challenged by Pokemon Trainer Tone and those Malap Marlins. Uh, Mal Miami traded their best player to Milwaukee two seasons ago, so maybe uh, my Minnesota's winning is going to beat this. So he is going to leave, with, of course, with that Crobat. And my play first here is I'm just going to uh, U-turn here. He's going to reveal Brave Bird, which is, which is good information to have. So the Flygon will take it. It reveals that it is uh, has some attack, but not a lot. It is not adamant. Uh, it could be Jolly with some uh, attack investment. I'm going to click that U-turn. I'm going to reveal that it is very much physically defensive, and I'm going to go right into my Dialga here. Uh, now, I can make a couple of plays here. I can click uh, Flash Cannon and destroy this thing, uh, which is basically what I'm going to do. Uh, it lets me scout to see how much death investment he has. As you can see, he has a decent amount. He is not full uh, spadef. He had about 140 or so, I think, remember, on the calcs. Uh, but the 50% berry, the Mago berry, will get him back as he will go for taunt. So it's not the end of the world. However, it, it could be worse. It definitely could be a lot worse. So I'm going to go right into my duck trio. My Ollie here is he's going to withdraw his Seros and I'm going to trap whatever he wants to go into, which is the Seismitone. So, uh, Seismitone will come on out here as I am just going to go straight for a Toxic. I cannot let this thing do anything. Uh, if it's on a timer, it's perfect. Uh, the, the less I have to see this thing, the more I can freely switch in with my Keldeo, my Flygon, all that. He's going to go straight for the Ice Punch, which is very, very solid prep on his part. Knocks me down to 10%. Uh, as you guys know, I'm Scarf, so I. I'm not really going to Scarf Toxic again, and even with Rocks Up, I I can come in, I can live on 2, uh, I think it's 2 HP, yeah, so I'm just going to swap right into Shoji here, I really don't need this thing, so I'm just going to, I'm going to do what I can, he's going to get his Rocks Up here, as this is fine, it, it's whatever, uh, he has his Rocks Up, it does not bother me, because the only thing really affected by Rocks is, yeah, exactly, nothing really cares that Rocks are up. Um, he's going to withdraw his Seismitone and go right into Lancelot, which of course is that Mega Gallade. And this is where a couple of things get really, really fun. I'm going to click Poison Jab here, and I'm going to get some damage off. Now, a couple of things can happen on this turn. So I'm going to pause right here. So I have a couple of plays I can make. I can go into my Torterra here, and I can see... And he's packing Ice Punch. However, if he Sword stances up, Close Combat can Oko me from here, from Mega Glade. So, my play right here is to Toxic him. I cannot let him... Uh, not Toxic. I need damage on this as much as I can. I can't let this thing set up in my face, so I need to make sure I put this thing on a timer. And I need to make sure that I assess the threat. Because this can just win right now if it, uh, if it gets it correctly set up. So, I am just going to stay on in here. 
as you guys will see here, he is going to Mega Evolve, of course. Of course, he's going to stay in on my Poison type. However, this is where it gets fun. So, given that I have two Ground types, he is going to click Thunder Punch. Now, if I would have swapped to Torterra, it would have been a fine play. However, Ice Punch probably would have killed from here. I'm going to click Toxic, and thankfully, I hit. So, this Lancelot is going to uh, be put on a timer. If it Swords Dances, that's fine. It's already half. It's already at half HP. My Black Sludge will put me on a little bit of HP. However, uh, the next Thunder Punch will kill me. So I am just going to let this thing... Uh, I'm just going to sack this thing off. As he decides to swap out and go right into Seismitone. As I clicked Poison Jab right here. Just to get damage off. Because it would have put him in Toxic range where Toxic would have KO'd. So a Poison Jab from here will do some ship damage. However, Choji trying to, trying to tough it out will be living for another turn. Now... I can't really do much to this, so I'm just going to taunt it right here. I am not going to let it do anything it may want to do here. Uh, so I'm just going to taunt it. I'm not going to let it like uh, get up like a rain dance since I saw it had an attacking move. He just goes for Earthquake, as unfortunately that will be the first kill of the game. And Choji will fall to the size of a tone. However, this gives me the opportunity to go right into my Flygon and grab some HP back from a Giga Drain. Um, I don't think he'll know that this gets Giga Drain, personally, because you don't see uh, Flygon running in a lot, and you don't uh, really see it a whole heck of ton. So Ray-Ban's gonna come out of here, take those rock damage, I'm just gonna Giga Drain all that sweet HP up, four times effective, and that will straight Oko the Seismitoad, as I will get up all that nice HP as Seismitone will drop, so it's, it's it's a trade. I'm fine with Seismitone being gone, because that is another switch into Dialga being getting rid of. So Scarf Dialga can come in here sooner or later and start just clicking buttons. Uh, he is going to Ice Punch here, which will take my Fly Gun out, funnily enough. So we are just going for a trade, for trade, for trade here. As three Pokemon will drop, unfortunately two of them are on my side, however, like I said, uh, I'm weakening things. My wind condition is still looking good, Scarf Dialga is still looking really, really solid. Uh, Keldeo is fine here. I can let this thing take damage. He's going to close combat me as it will do a ton of damage. However, Keldeo will hit Scald here. And because of the close combat, reducing its spadef, the Scald will kill because of close combat. Now, it actually it never kills um, unless it's a crit. If it is uh, just a regular, even minus special defense, he is going to come in with his uh, Porygon Z here and he will KO my Keldeo here. So we are just trading back and forth and back and forth as Porygon Z will claim a kill. I'm going to go right into Biome here. Um, I don't think he'd have Ice Beam here since he just revealed Tri Attack. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me. He does decide to withdraw, which makes me think he might be a Scarf. Uh, Porygon Z is on, he's just going to go to this. I'm going to Earthquake here, trying to predict the Age Slash to want to come in on here on a predicted Grass type move or a Rock type move, trying to predict the Crobat. So it's a very, very good play on his part, uh, predicting, kind of reading my general sense of the game. He knows I'm a very aggressive player and I like to make the aggressive plays. And I'm, I tried to make a, an aggro play and uh, click Earthquake, predicting the Age Slash to come on in. And now he will actually do the opposite. He will go into Gilgamesh here, which is his Age Slash. So I'm actually going to pull a swap out into the trio, funnily enough. As the stones will dig into Ali, he's at 4 HP. He will withdraw Gilgamesh because he had Shed Shell on it. And, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, Ghost Types can't be trapped anyway. Sorry. My, my bad. But, uh,. I'm going to click Sucker Punch. I will hit this bird. He will click Brave Bird. And it will knock out Ollie. So now I'm down 2-4. to four. However, Scarf Dialga can come on in and start claiming kills. As long as it's not fully Spadef or Uniclus. If it's fully Spadef or Uniclus, we have a problem on our hands. However, Scarf Dialga can, can start doing a lot of work here. So this is, it's a point in the match where this really can make or break it. He is going to swap out his uh, Curl Pad. He's going to go right into Gilgamesh, which is that I'm going to click Flamethrower. As I predicted it, I got it right, and it will do just over half. So that is a lot of damage. However, with the leftovers, it is a very, it's a roll in his favor to live. So I'm not going to risk the roll. I'm going to go right into my dedicated switch in, which is my Torterra. Sorry. He's going to go for stance change here. 
as he will click Sacred Sword, which was a really solid play on his part, in order to get rid of my Dialga. Um, it would have done a lot. However, since I am the biome, biome will put in the work. So now I can make a couple plays. I can Earthquake this thing and get rid of it. Um, I can Synthesis. I can get my rocks up and get rid of the Scrobat. As my play is just to get my rocks up, uh, predict the King Shield, uh, waste that turn of King Shield because if I Earthquake there, it's bad for me. Uh, so I will get my rocks up here, which is really nice. Those late game rocks can start putting pressure on the Crowbat. As my leftovers will pop up here. And I am just going to get some leftovers back. I'm just going to get that chip. Uh, now, since he has three turns of leftover recovery, he's definitely out of range of Scarf Dialga's uh, Flamethrower. So I'm just going to click Earthquake here, and I'm going to do a metric ton of damage to this thing. As it almost kills, since, and that's like the defensive shield form. He will transform into the offensive form. And he will just click Shadow Ball, which is a very solid play. It hits both my Dialga and my Torterra for very good damage, you can see here. He does unfortunately get the Spadef Drop, however, I am faster still. My leftovers will pop, I will get a little bit of HP back, and same with the Gilgamesh on the other side. So, lefties are popping. However, I am going to set this up, and I am just going to get uh, some HP back. Now, the reason I did this is because I predicted him to want to keep Aegislash around in order to help with my Dialga and probably preserve some differential, as he just does go for another Shadow Bolt, uh, basically saying straight to me, hey, I'm going to sack my Aegislash here, you can you can kill it now. So, I'm like, okay, cool, I will take an Aegislash dying. Uh, it didn't it didn't die last, last season, which was annoying, but uh, <laughs> this season I'll finally get my revenge on it. As Aegislash will drop to Torterra's Earthquake. So Torterra's picking up kills and racking them up at a substantial pace. As you guys can see here, the leftovers will come on in. And he will go into PZ, PZPO. Uh, very, very nice reference on the name there. Uh, so he's going to click Ice Beam, which makes me think, yep, he is Scarf. Um, and that will be the end of my Torterra. Terra will drop and now it is on Scarf Dialga. Now since the Crobat is still alive, um, I cannot click Earth Power and go for that. I have to click something like Flash Cannon and do as much damage as I can. He is going to go for Ice Beam here. <laughs> and my luck happens to be amazing. I get frozen. And at this point, I'm screaming outside. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I cannot get frozen twice but Dialga is much more well trained than Giraffe Rig is. I am frozen solid however I thaw right away. You can't freeze Dialga for that long. So Flash Cannon will pop here as it will do a metric ton to this Porygon Z. He's going to click Ice Beam again and he will let this drop. So thankfully he does not freeze me again. So Flash Cannon will come on out and it will kill this Porygon Z. So Porygon Z goes down, and now it's a it's a true testament. Is this Reuniclus uh, Assault Vest? If it's max HP, I have the I have the chance to do a KO it. So I have to hope I can do a KO. So I will click Flash Cannon here, and it does a decent chunk. It reveals he's max HP, and he clicks Psychic, and Low Kane will drop, and that is your ball game. So unfortunately, your Minnesota Twin Nails will lose 2-0 against Tone. However, this was a fantastic game. Uh, be sure to check Tone out. Uh, I want, I'm want. i definitely going to be doing that. I'm going to be watching his side of this battle because it was an amazing battle. Um, this, was, this was just a fun one to play. There was no real hacks involved. And when it was, it didn't matter really because Freezing Dialga and then I thought the same turn. But yeah, so like I said, I, I highly, highly encourage you guys to go over and check out Tone. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. And with that, I'm going to get on out of here today, guys. With that, peace out, scouts.